from our Rockabilly Ruckus series. Stay tuned for a guitar tutorial on Carol by the late, great Chuck Berry. We shall be right back. Play like a pro at string sound stick. Hey. One, two, three. <laughs> String Sound Studios. In this live stream, we're going to talk about five, again, five concepts, the top five concepts that will enable you to make sense of the technique used by Carol. Chuck Berry, Carol. I gotta speak better tonight. I'm all pumped up for this. I was all excited about doing this. I gotta calm down here. Again, I'm Michael Violetta, String Sound Studios, and I'm glad you tune in again. The uh, goal of my live streams is to be educational, entertaining, and exploratory on a variety of topics. We are streaming to you from multiple platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Um, what else? Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, well, Twitter, um, Twitter is Twitch though. Oh, Periscope, Periscope. So, and a few others too, a few more obscure ones if you're on there. So uh, please subscribe, especially to our YouTube. Hit that bell for notifications. And uh, especially you Periscope people, you seem to watch a lot on that. All right, before we get started, uh, can anyone hear me out there? How's the audio and video quality? Hit that chat box. Let me know, okay? Even if you don't want to uh, you know, ask any musical questions or whatever, just say hi. All right, but let me know how it's sounding out there. All right, and uh, we are live. Everything looks good from here. So uh, it's hard to tell. I'm on my uh, restream here. I can go over there, and that says I'm live. So apparently, everything says I'm live. And... Um, and before I get started on the tune, I, I want to mention that a, a good friend of mine, a teacher, a mentor over the years, uh, a fellow by the name of Joe Carbone, passed away. A uh, phenomenal guitar player. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, anyone familiar with the jazz scene, but you know, Joe was the closest thing to sounding like Joe Pass, uh, if anyone knows Joe Pass. So I uh, was actually friends with Joe Pass, too. Uh, Joe was a long-standing guitar teacher at Five Towns College in New York. And that's where I went, and uh, many thanks to him. He also uh, played at my wedding, and I had my deepest sympathies. These go out to his family, friends, and all the great musicians that he inspired, including myself. All right, and let's get started. So we are doing Carol by Chuck Berry, okay? And uh, I talked about doing five concepts. Now, we're going to take it from the intro, and in the introduction, there's a lot of use of double stops and little chords. So let's go into that first, and we've got to come in on that pickup measure. So I'm going to show you that, and uh, this is in the key of C, and we'll talk. We're going to talk a little bit more about keys again later on. Okay? Hey, who's hey Kelly? How's it going? Good. Good. I'm glad it sounds good. Does it look good though? <laughs> All right, my uh, audio and video tech over there from the control room in a different town, and she watches too. She asks questions. Too. No, she's uh, always logged on. Not always, but uh, most of the time. All right, let's get started here and hope some people are watching. And uh, you could, you have any questions, feel free to ask me. All right, we're going to get going here. Now, when you do a carol like Chuck, he plays these intros, but he always changes them up. All. They sound similar, but he changes them up a lot. And this comes right out of a C chord. He's playing right around that C shape. All right, so let's say here's a big C bar chord. Let's make that a little smaller like this. Okay. And again, I'm doing these from a more novice intermediate level. I'm not doing 
this this I would can well I mean Chuck's good I would say this is more of an intermediate uh, type level okay and you can play his stuff on an intermediate level uh, as good as he was great great player but uh, his stuff is doable okay now anyway let's take a look okay hey oh hi rocks uh, thank you thank you very much I'm glad you're watching and my wife's watching too <laughs> so let's take a look everyone's watching. We're going to start here, and it's one of these typical, I call it a stock lick. So you have that blues type intro, he's coming from, so he's coming from an E flat here. Remember, we're in, uh, we're in eighth position here. Here's positions on my guitar, right? Three, five, seven. Remember, my dots, my dots are odd numbers. So here's seven, so here's eight. We're going to start here on the third string with like my second finger, right? And slide up a half step. You see that good? I could always zoom in too. So I have this. So let's do that slow. Comes in on the end of three. One, two, three. Play that a little bit off. One, two, three. Okay, so you have this. Just one, three on the second string. this baby C chord here. It's a double stop. Some of it's double stop. Sometimes he hits the chord. But a double stop is, let's say, for our purposes right now, two notes played at the same time on adjacent strings. And you can play them skipping strings, too. But we're doing it kind of like that because that's what Chuck's doing. So I do this. So you go one, two, three. Two and three. Hear that? One, two, three. Now how do you go about doing this introduction here? We have we have a little capo here. And a capo, of course, is covering more than, a, or playing more than one string on the same fret, let's say. Right? And when I get my capo here, I got to hold both of these strings with my first finger. Can you see that all right? There's my capo. Look at my finger. It's up a little bit like this. Okay? I'm not keeping it flat and straight. Sometimes you have to, but in this case, I got to do that. So if we have to do something like that, that angle helps you. Take a look at that angle. All right, so back to the face angle here, straight ahead. And I have this. Now, remember, when you're doing this, he's got that hard three. And then he comes in with that riff again. So watch. One, two, three. Right, that's and three and. Here we go. That's just one capo here. Take a look. On the eighth fret, strings one, two, and three. Okay. Let me try to fix this here a little bit. I want to get up a little closer sometimes. Okay, you want to see my right hand as well. There you go. I want you to see my right hand as well, but I want to zoom in on my left. So that would be an F9 chord. And a double stop, okay, we call it a triple stop if you want. Sometimes he's playing double stop, sometimes triple stop. So this is an F9 chord, like, you know, that's right. You can do that with one finger here. The overall harmonic activity is based off this chord. But he's playing a little. And the bass player is playing and the piano player is playing, so they're filling in that lower end for him. And uh, so he gets this sound. So he has to play less. So again, that's... Let's take it from the edge. The edge is the beginning. One, two, three. It goes back to the C as I did. So I got a bar of C, full bar of C, full bar of F9, then a full bar of C. 
And then he does the chords come in, band comes in. Let's take that whole thing. So basically, we're dealing with this little baby C chord here, and we're dealing with this F9 chord. All right? You can see that there? I'm looking at myself there. I need to look at the camera. All right, so from the edge, one, two, three. straight eighth notes, down up strumming. And I want to point something out. I watch some people play when they do these double and triple stops, and sometimes they do a lot of all down picks. And it sounds very forced, unless that's what you're trying to get. But you can get that, these accents and you can get a nice even flow. This is more, I'm, I'm talking about wrist playing too. That's another kind of technique we're going to talk about in this song, right? So I want you to try to do some down up strumming on these double stops. Um, you know, people do it on chords. I don't know, for some reason when they do doubles, they do it on single notes, down up picking. All right, so for some reason when they do double stops or little small chords, go like this. I'm using a lot of wrist here. Back up a minute. See, let me take a look at my right hand. Yes, I use elbow picking too. Okay? But on something like this, right? remember, I hold the pick like this. I call it Johnny Smith style. Right? If you take a look, it's like the talking hand. Oh, I'm, in, I'm in my box there. What's happening? Okay? If you take a look, I do this. Right? And if you take a look, my hand's like that, and the pick goes in there, like that. And I hold quite a bit of the pick. See that? I hold a good, I would say, two thirds or even more. 75% of the pick, hardly. But I like to use smaller picks, that's me, all right? So make sure you hold the pick like this, and you can, can fan your hand out too. This gets a real good tone, and the pick is in there, and you're not gonna drop it, it's not gonna move around, you're not going to hit unnecessary strings. So get used to holding the pick like that, all right? Whether you do an elbow picking, right, or fanning your hand out. But I do hold the pick other ways also, not all the time. Right? You do wanna do some of this to get sounds. Well, that's another thing, all right? I do about, probably about 80% of the playing is always like this. And I use picking fingers, pimp fingers too. Because I'm versatile. Okay, so let's get going. All right, so we have that. Now, again, I was mentioning um, on that last bar, one and two and three and four and. Then that bar where the, they have the break there and boom, the drums, right? So what he does, he goes, play these two double stops on, let's say, oh, you could do this. I like this. Just a little bend there. Or this. So you play your third and fourth finger. You give like a little quarter tone bend. Okay. So let me try that from the beginning. One, two, three. to the chord. Now, I am doing this F chord here. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Let me let me play the intro for you again with the, uh, the old backing track. Yeah. One, two, three. I messed it up. I couldn't get it. I'll start again. One, two, three. right there so you know what I'm talking about with that break now we're going to go the next concept we're looking at right we talked about playing some of these double stops um and, and there's a lot of solo I mean in riffs in here but we're not doing that today okay I'm, I'm not doing a marathon on this it'll be too much for you to learn too and I quite frankly I have to learn the solos and the rest I'm going to revisit these tunes I think it's great to do these in different parts we do you know some riffs some intros so you get used to that 
then we do some chords, and then I'll come revisit this tune later on. I'll show you the riffs and maybe even do the solo, okay? So it's always good to do that. He's got a lot of cool stuff in this song. All right, we're going to do something. We're going to do something we call root and fifth and root and sixth voicing. voicing. That's very common on the guitar, especially with the, uh, you know, with the rock guitar players. And what you do is, whatever position you're in, we're, we're on an inside string here, okay? on an inside string, and I call that inside because it's the fifth string. Your sixth string in your first string, okay? Your sixth string in your first string are outside, all right? This will be an inside root, meaning that's an F, okay? We're on eighth position on the fifth string. My first finger goes there. And my third finger is going to go on the third string. That's not the third string, the fourth string. It's gonna go on the fourth string two frets um, up and a string higher. So we got five and four, one, three. Now, that would be something we call a root and fifth because I'm playing an F to a C. So I'm playing an F, F, G, A, B, C is five away. Get it? Root, the root of the F chord is F. The fifth is C. Now I said, well, we're gonna do root fifth and root sixth. So what am I gonna do there? Well, I have to play the interval of the sixth. So in music, I'm playing C, right? That's the fifth from F, and I need to go to a D. Where's my D? My D is right here. My D is on my uh, fourth string, on my 12th fret here. See that? But I have to play that along with this. So we're not going to lift this up. We're going to play this chord like this. not terribly difficult once you get going one of the things you want to be aware of when you're doing this right, is you know your arm your position of your arm and your hand has to move around right remember you want to you want to teach like this you want your thumb generally behind your second finger and your arm is always relative to where you're playing and that pivots a lot according to what kind of chord you play if you're playing a chord shape like this then my, my arm's more this way. If I'm playing diagonal like this, my arm's um, more into towards my body. So yes, we want to play in our fingertips, but yeah, we also have to play and use capos, and we also have to do this. And we also, you know, we want that thumb behind the second finger, but sometimes, you know, it floats a little bit. It deviates from that. So that's important, all right? Because when I play a chord like this, and I know I'm going here, I'm going to move back here. Who needs to... Who needs five different cameras? I just go like this, right? All right, and and take a look at my arm. Okay, I'm pulling my arm in so I can reach this. All right, see how my arm is here? You don't want to try to do this and reach that. You can't reach it. I mean, I still can, but it's tough. So let's be aware. I can pivot like this. Well, listen to the rhythm here. We're going to do one and two and three and four and slow. Okay, can you see the... And I'm doing all eighth notes. One and two and three and four and... Now, obviously, when I play the pick, I do down a pick, but it's a... Uh, you know, I noticed from doing videos, I've done instructional videos and things. Uh, of course, doing these live streams too, which turn into instructional videos. Uh, instead of using all different cameras, and, and everyone seems to just focus on their fretting hand, you know, play here. You, know, you can see what I'm doing. You can see what I'm picking. It, and use your thumb, because it's hard to see with the pick. But once you get the gist of it... All right, so now you go down here. Right, you get that strumming going just on these two strings. I'm also using a little bit of a muted technique. Okay? So these are all the different concepts. So far, I covered most of them. Use of double stops, root fifth to root sixth, reaching out with that fourth finger. That was another concept. Okay? Remember, I said five concepts. So that's three. And now we're talking a little bit more number four concept, muted in wrist technique. Okay. All right, so what am I doing? When you're going to mute, you should do it more down by the bridge here. Okay. 
And what, what you do is you lightly touch, you lightly touch the strings here, right? And you do down a, I'm doing down a picking, Cause especially when the volume's loud too. It gets that chucky sound, right? That heavy metal type sound. Well, Chuck's not heavy metal, but let me do it slow. Let's take a listen without that. It doesn't sound bad without it, but. Kind of mutes the strings and it keeps the open strings from ringing also right uh, we want to do that and get a little more wrist in that technique there all right so the chords are pretty straightforward it's what we call a one four five progression in the key of c major so we're doing uh well the progression is in order would be c would be one f right would be the four chord because it's four away from c and G would be the five chord. However, Chuck does this a lot in his tunes. He kind of comes in on the chorus a lot, then does, you know, a verse and then a chorus. So a lot of his introductions, you know, Johnny Be Good, or whatever, they don't come in on the, the key, meaning on the one chord, which would be C. They come in on the four chord. So in the case of this, Chuck's coming in on the F chord um, when, when he plays that. So, this is this is uh, when he, when he starts on the uh, on the actual you know, chords. Okay, in the intro he's on C. He goes to like we talked about F. So it's, that's kind of a, a I think it's like a twelve bar blues intro. Yeah, it is. It's a twelve bar blues intro, and he's already singing in that. But then he does another you know he does another twelve bar blues with eight C chords and four F. So. The progression is not all 12 bar blues and repeating, all right, a standard 12 bar blues. We'll talk a little bit about that. But once you know these chords, you can listen to it and figure it out. You know? And uh, I could send you the backing track that I'm playing over too, which would be great. All right, so now you got the F chord. We're gonna go outside to C. So he goes right to the C. That's my one chord, right? Now again, there's other ways to play this. I elected to play it here and teach it to you here. I have the music here, I have the score. They're saying to do it here. Uh, that, that's pretty hard, especially if you're an intermediate. I mean, that's hard for me to think what kind of guitar do you play in here? I could reach it, but you're better off doing it here. Because you can reach stuff like that better. You, you say, well, I can do what Chuck does it. Well, you know, you're going to, let's, you got to know what waters you can swim in, okay? If you hand the stretch and you can't reach it, just compensate. It's not, it's the same chord. So let's make sure we do things where we can and we know what waters we can swim in on any different level, okay? Unless I'm still trying to teach myself. Now, you do want to get better. You do want to take challenges, but sometimes you, basically what I'm saying is you have to look at, you have to look at your physical capabilities as well. Look, if you don't got huge hands, you can't play Alan Holdsworth stuff. If you know who he is, you know, it's like comparable to playing, trying to play Rachmaninoff on the piano um, when you got smaller hands. Mine are, you know, on the smaller side, but my left hand's bigger from playing for so many years. So I'm going to play the C chord here, outside. That's my next chord. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do six string, okay? Six string on the eighth fret. Mm -hmm. Eighth fret, there's my C, root fifth. Now I got my uh, third finger on the fifth string. Same position too, all right? We're staying around the same positions. I'm not jumping all over. So here's my C chord. So now I gotta reach up to here. And I gotta reach to that fifth string. There we go. The fifth string here. Yeah. yeah. And that's an A note. So I get C to C6. The F chord would be an F, root and fifth, to F6 with the D in it. This would be C to C6. Okay? So, and when he goes to the chords, you got two and three and four. C. 
G. It's like the F chord, but you play that in 10. So I got here, again, my inside, my fifth string, and my fourth string, root and fifth. And then I'm going to reach for this. And of course, when you're higher to play, it's easier to stretch for this. Remember, keep that arm pulled in, all right? I'll get a little closer now. So there's your G chord. Back to C. Then he comes in with the verse, okay? Singing something like that, okay? I'm gonna. All right, let's take the intro again, all the way through to where the verse starts. And again, when you get to the verse, it's just gonna be eight bars of C, four of F, doing the same things I'm doing. But you gotta be able to just listen to it and figure it out, okay? Uh, but it's gonna be eight of C, four of F, and then four of C, four of G, and four of C again. So he's kind of doing like a 24 bar pattern in the verse. But let, let's take it, um, let's do the whole intro, and I'll stop right before the verse. All right, here we go again. Oh, one, two, three. intro all right so I would say from a teaching perspective from doing this song you're going to do the intro and then the verse I mean and then the right well the intro yeah and then the rest of the uh, chords in the intro and then start the verse all right so we're doing the verse it's just this chord you can do this. I mean, you can do this. I don't think you need really me to keep going on the lesson. I'm going to go back over the intro again with the double stop so you can check it out. Okay, but you have one, two, and three, and four. Here's what you want to do. Okay, in the verse, you have eight bars of music. You're in four, four time. Okay, we're practicing the one, four, five progression in the key of C major. That was the fifth concept. Okay. So we had one, reviewing the use of double stops. Two, root and fifth and root and sixth voicing. Okay, playing those chords. Reaching out with that fourth finger. That's part of the sixth voicing. That's a very common thing people do on the guitar. Muted and wrist technique. We talked about that. And practicing the one, four, five progression. Meaning C in the key of C, F, and G. All right, so here, this is important because you have eight bars of C. We're in 4-4 four, four time, so we have to count eight bars. So we do we go one, two, three, four, that's one bar. One, two, three, four, that's two bars. No, no, you count your bars, okay? Count your bars along with your counting. For example, I'm going to count two bars of C. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Instead of saying one, I'm, for the next bar, I'm going to go two, two, three, four. So I'm replacing the first beat of the bar with the actual bar number. So when you count, let's do a little drill here. Ready? With me. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Right? I'm on B, I'm on bar five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, and then eight, two, three, four. Then you know to go to the next chord. So you have to always count when you're playing. Yeah, you'll feel it after a while, but you know, if you're counting all these bars and you know, playing rhythm guitar, you have to, uh, you know, you could get, a, I don't know, just your mind can drift. So be aware, you're always counting. Um, of course, if you sing the tune, you pretty much know where it is. That keeps you active in the melody and where the F chord comes in. And then there's four bars of F. So let's do that and play it. So ready? Two, three. I'll do it a little quicker. Three, four. Three, four, 
and so on. So you want to count those bars out, all right? Remember, he has, you can break it down, you can say, well, it's a pattern of C and F, and then a pattern of C and G, um, C, G, C, uh, when you're playing the verse. And then he goes back to the intro. So this is more about the form of the song, all right? I think that's something that you have to really sit down and listen to and sing along with so you can learn the form of the song, okay? Yeah, I could, I'm teaching you the form and how to count it out, but uh, it's probably best just sitting down and listen because you got to listen to the song. You know, you're watching me play this and you know, teach it to you, and, but you, obviously you have to listen to the song. You got to sit down and play and get it straight yourself and count, okay? All right, let me go back over the introduction again. And I'm going to break that down one more time, and then we'll uh, wrap it up and uh, until next week. Okay, but uh, let's take a look. I'm going to play it slow. So we're going to come in. Remember, my position is going to be, ultimate position on the introduction is going to be eighth. I'm going to start here. Okay, one, two, three. intro I guess this is more of an intro piece if you know the chords again all right you'll be able if you want to learn those chords okay you're gonna be able to play this song so I would really focus on the introduction the first you know 12 bars of the song with the intro and uh, the chords because then you can be able to play the rest it's just a matter of doing the form meaning form doing the progression well it says they you know like I said eight bars of C two bars of F uh, four bars of F rather okay so, and there's, there's 12 right there, and then it's 4, 4, 4, and another uh, half of that. So, the verse is kind of a 24 bar thing. And again, you know, eventually we'll do the, uh, the riffs and some of the solo in there. All right, so let's, uh, let's uh, take it on again. I'll play with the loopers so you can hear. One, two, three, two, three. <laughs> something it's not exactly what he's playing okay so uh you know again i have uh, i wanted to point out my friends over here at limelight they have a music app which is uh pretty interesting uh it's for uh if you want your performances and things uh done give them a call up at limelight uh, i think it's limelight.com uh look for that logo and uh they could hook you up and live stream your live event that's what is the live streaming app kind of like what i'm doing but this isn't an app, it's a restream and a little bit different. Uh, but uh, maybe I'll use that okay, one day. All right, so your uh, call to action. Join me next week for another song. And I believe I'm going to do an alternative uh, song. I, I think I'm going to do Cobain's, uh, what is it, Come As You Are. So that'll be cool. We did a few in the Rockabilly. Uh, I'm calling this Rockabilly. I mean, it's rock, all right. Rock, Rockabilly, 50s. But I'm calling it putting the uh, you know the Chuck Berry and things of that nature 
and Stray Cats, of course, and our Rockabilly Ruckus, because to me, they are kind of Rockabilly. Rockabilly Ruckus section right here. And uh, your homework, of course, is to practice, listen to Carol. And again, people say, well, why are you doing Carol? Well, I wanted to do Carol because everyone does Johnny B. Good. Don't get me wrong. I like Johnny B. Good. But I thought I'd do something a little bit different. And uh, I, when I do Chuck's, uh, Chuck's Tunes of the Future, I'll probably do different ones. And maybe one day I will do Johnny B. Good. Okay? Uh, so your homework is to practice, listen to Carol. And, uh, you know, do the, get, get learning that, you know, that walk, that uh, <laughs> that Chuck Berry walk, you know, you got to do that. That's important. You stand up and play and start going across the stage like that. Uh, what an institution. He was a great man. Love him. All right. So sign up for my Play Like a Pro video courses. Okay, I have a few out there. I have the Pure Beginning Guitar Course, the Beginning Blues Guitar Course, and a kind of a Midway Blues Guitar Course. Those come with backing tracks and scores. I... Uh, you know, I really worked hard on getting those uh, up and uh, plan to do more in the future. So, uh, you know, it, it, you've got to follow a, a system here and a, a curriculum. And that's what I do. I try to build curriculums with my uh, video, instructional videos. And they actually, and they're a little bit different than the live streams. Yeah, I got close-up shots and then my hand, you know, blows up and, you know, screen comes out. So you can see my left hand, but I, you still can see my right hand as well. So my left hand gets really big, but I don't like, again, I don't like the, the, the you know, just the camera focusing on one hand. Okay? Uh, I think you need to see both when you're learning and at the same time. Yeah, sometimes you'll be looking back and forth a little bit at the left and the right hand. All right, so uh, follow us. I also have a ukulele course, beginning your ukulele course. And uh, those, those, you know, all those courses are great. I mean, they come with backing tracks, scores, um, you know, two, two different, uh, uh, you know, zoom in version and a regular version. So, uh, very, very ped good pedagogical system of learning. Uh, please send feedback to string sound studios website or well, right here in the chat box. Okay. Let me know what musical topics you would like me to do. And please follow us on all our social media and subscribe like Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, Twitch, all of those things. Well, I need uh, more fans out there. We'll make you a, a Sound Dead, a String Sound Studio Sound Dead. You can watch and learn to play. All right, so um, remember, play like a pro. And I shall see you next week, 5.30. Should be doing it. Check our calendar at String Sound Studios. Have a good week. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Play like a pro at String Sound Studios.